So good morning, hello. Uh, welcome to the IT Connect conference um, with my talk about the lightweight stuff. And uh, whatever I will do today, I will check in this to my GitHub repository so you can download the code afterwards. And uh, the repository, the URI is github.com Adam Bean Air Hacks. Okay, so let's start with the slides. So I have still fun, a uh, lots of fun with Java, Java E and micro profile. And uh, what I do on the back end, I will show you in a few minutes. Uh, I spend also some of my time with uh, web standards and JavaScript, but this is not this out of scope of today's today's session. So um, I I write a blog, which is more or less a notepad, under airhacks.io. You will find um, online courses, and with uh, under airhacks.tv, uh, airhacks.tv is uh, is like a live show exactly like this, where you can ask me questions once a month. It's the first Monday of the month. 6 p.m. CET or CEST, uh, depends whether it's summertime or not. And we have already a community which, uh, yeah, which meets every month and uh, asks and answers questions. And the questions can be gathered uh, in uh, GitHub GIST. Okay, um, so my motto or credo or uh, um, operation mode is learn once, never migrate. So the idea is if you, if you invest your time in uh, standards like technology, um, the chance, the uh, the the possibilities are higher that uh, it will actually survive. Now, some online courses, and this was the Airhex TV. And uh, if you have time, uh, see you in December. There are Airhex uh, workshops at the Munich Airport about Jakarta e microprofile in the clouds, and uh, and also the JavaScript stuff. Usually there were workshops uh, in in summer, but because of the project load, I had to uh, to cancel them uh, or cancel them. Not even started with them, so didn't, they were not. They are not even announced. So if you like, see you in December. And uh, I had already a lots of uh, attendees from former Yugoslavia. So uh, if you like, come to Munich. Now uh, this was the last slide, and uh, what I would like to start with um, with a little bit of infrastructure. So uh, first, you saw where I am. I am in the hotel Tami and uh, IT Connect. So we can close this tab, and I will push all my uh, all my um, samples from today, and of course the uh, extensive slide to this repository. Now, what I would uh, use uh, in in a second a tool called Watch and Deploy, and the tool uh, um, was actually started by a question, or the, I got the idea by building this tool in a JavaScript workshop where someone asked me. Why there is in Java nothing which uh, you know um, scans the changes in the source folder and deploys the application on demand? And, uh, and I thought about that. This is actually pretty easy to implement. And this is like uh, five Java SE classes and uh, and Maven uh, embedder. It's like I think 500k kilobyte. So you can download the self-contained jar and it will work like uh, on my machine in a second. You will see this. So if you go to GitHub and um, GitHub and releases, and you can just download the what the jar and uh, jar and what is stands for watch and deploy. So this is the first tool. What I did uh, today night actually, as you can see, seven hours ago and two years ago. So I extended the uh, essential archetype because what I usually do in my project, I always use Jakarta e and Java E8 together with micro profile. And I always had to add the micro profile dependency to it, and um, it took a little bit of time. So okay, now extend it, and the very first time I will actually show it is uh, today for the conference. Uh, it's actually a good test, or even or not, <laughs> depends. Okay, which servers will I use first? The uh, WebSphere. This is the largest possible or uh, imaginable server. What you usually think about is it is Open Liberty. It's of course no more true. Open Liberty is very lightweight. In fact, there are no more uh, big servers. So I, for years, so um, whatever you see in the wild, you will um, you will also see in um, um, or in my project. So there is like you know servers which consumes gigabytes of memory are no more available unless, of course, you are caching gigabytes of memory. So at the same time, I will also use Payara for simultaneous deployment. 
I could also use Whitefly. The problem is Payara and Whitefly, they are using uh, the same port, so I had to decide for one server. So I use OpenLiberty and Payara. I could also use Tommy, but Tommy, Payara, and Whitefly, they use uh, run port 8080, and OpenLiberty runs on port 9080, and therefore it's easier, uh, easier to work with it. So, um, okay, great. And um, I also maintain in GitHub, is a set of Docker uh, Docker images for for various servers. So if I will use Docker, I will probably use an image from from Docklands here. Okay, so let's start uh, with with the show, and I will need uh, the command line first. And I would like to uh, start with the setup Java E project. And if you take a look on that, what is actually it? So um, if you, uh, I will just cat it. And this is the Maven archetype, exactly what I showed you earlier. So you could actually go to the website, copy and paste the command, and you will get exactly the same, the same result. The only difference is here, I'm, uh, I have a variable, so it expects a name of the project. So and today is almost Easter, so um, why not X? So uh, and this is, of course, wait a second. So set up Java E and X is the project. So let's do this. And with a little bit of luck, it should actually work. So it takes a while because it fetches now or tries to find a new version in the uh, in Sonatype Central and um, it found. Um, so it was pushed today. This is the 004 version. So what happened so far, uh, there is a project as you can see X. So let's, uh, there's X. So I can switch to X and and build it. So it's built. By the way, what I completely forgot, this is an interactive session. So you can ask me questions using the build in chat. It is, uh, uh, um, or using the air hacks uh, hashtag um, on Twitter. So Adam Bean, I'm on Twitter. So you can use the hashtag air hacks or use the build in chat. If there are no questions, I can show you more. <laughs> so it depends what you're interested in. So now, what I would also like to do is to start NetBeans. This is uh, the open source version of NetBeans. Uh, really easy to install. Actually, what I did, I just downloaded NetBeans and um, and extracted that. So um, And I have my X. So now, what happened behind the scenes is uh, it created a project which comprises Java 8 API and MicroProfile, and this is new. I always edit it um, afterwards, and uh, yeah, um, it's faster this way. And actually, in all my current projects, I always use Java 8 and Java and MicroProfile because all major application servers are supporting both. And the interesting part is both dependencies are provided. And uh, what happened inside? So I have my ping resource. And uh, this ping resource comes with a single injection point message, which is uh, resolved or uh, configured in MicroProfile config. And this configuration file was added because usually you will need the file for JSON Web Token authentication and other stuff. So and um, and uh, this is fully optional. So actually, what you can also do, you can add here a, uh, a default value. So this file I just added because. Um, in usual microservice project, we use JWT, JSON Web Token um, authentication, and in this files the public key is stored. Uh, with uh, with that, the signature of the token can be verified. Cool. So we have the way, uh, the X. So now start uh, launch the servers. And um, so um, what I um, can do with the Payara. So what this does is it completely deletes and reinstalls the Payara fool. It's a simple script which just goes and say, says remove uh, folder Payara and extract Payara. That's all. And then I can start the Payara server. And uh, I will just, I think it's enough to, this uh, Liberty is clean. So I will st start the Liberty server at the same time. So both servers um, uh, are the largest possible distribution. So the Open Liberty comprises Java 8 full with all the APIs, even Corba is inside. And um, and the and uh, MicroProfile as well. And the uh, Payara does the same. So Payara comes with uh, with the full. It's not 
micro profile and the web profile is just the full Payara. So both servers are here. And uh, so now what I would like to do is to launch what? So, um, and this, um, show you the, my script again, what sh, and this script, it just says java minus jar and uh, where to deploy uh, the resulting war. And um, you, you don't have to use what, you could use IntelliJ, Eclipse or NetBeans built-in plugins. I just uh, wanted to do even less, you no. Know, <laughs> Uh, work with even less magic and just use a tool which just pulls the source folder and deploys uh, wars on demand. Okay, so we have that. I can now launch it, what sh, and it should find and deploy the X. So as you can uh, see, I had Whitefly, Payara, and Open Liberty configured. I, I, I don't like to launch, uh, to launch Whitefly because it's stock distribution and it will collide with Payara. So now all the eggs are deployed. Uh, the war with micro profile and Java 8 inside is 4K. And uh, with a little bit of luck, um, with a little bit of luck, you see auto deploy X. This is deployed and it should be also deployed on the uh, X here on uh, Open Liberty. So now what we can do, we could do actually command line. I could say curl, HTTP, localhost, uh, this was 8080, X, resources, and ping. So enjoy Jakarta E with micro profile. This was uh, Payara and 9080, I think 9080 should be a response from uh, Open Liberty. Now on this note, I get a question to know how big the servers actually are. So we can launch the JVisual VM and take a look at the memory consumption of Glassfish and uh, Glassfish actually Payara and uh, go to monitor. And we can see it consumes right now 120 megabyte of RAM. If I perform GC, it goes down to about 80 megabyte, megabyte of RAM. So uh, this is what it consumes right now. And it comes with stock configurations so nothing is optimized. It, uh, it starts at the beginning with a half gig of RAM. Um, we could even tweak it even further. Um, at the same time, so this is the, um, the Open Liberty, I think. This one, yeah. And if I uh, perform the garbage collection, you can see the web is even smaller. It comes with uh, 60 uh, uh, megs of RAM with uh, full Java 8 and uh, full, uh, full microprofile support. So, okay, so now let's implement something. And what I wanted to do is to create a resource. Uh, it's called, of course, should be X. X, and it's going to be X resource, X resource. Uh, X resource, this is the right one. And get X, get X, yes. And um, I don't like to return this X, so what I would like to do is to have a proper X. And by the way, this is go to be X, and I would like to move this in correct folder. So boundary X resource, and I would like to have a real X. So go here, entity, and egg and this egg comes with um, does it have a name uh, probably color is better color and uh, boolean boiled let's go with that and um, yeah it's enough I think so we have that I would like to have a convenience constructor and uh, this should be enough and then what I would like to do is to, um, so this config property, just, or leave it for later. And this will return an egg, which is, should be a collection of egg, but stick with that for a test. And um, then I can say return new egg, color, of course, uh, gold and boiled should be. So now this is the simplest possible microservice you can probably build. And um, and we can of course use the message and configure that, but for now it is okay. 
So what we get out of that, so I will just do this. This is just a small uh, workaround for which I would like to show you in a second. So what we got with that is the following. So now I would like to switch to browser right now. And for this purpose, uh, I can kill actually the JVisual VM and, uh, and switch to browser. So where is my Firefox? This is the Firefox go here so and this is not pink rather than X so as you can see uh, there is no uh, no message body writer found for uh, text HTML which is true this is the response of open liberty but I can show you the glass fish or payara is a little bit more lenient so I should got a proper answer here as you can see boiled through gold and the raw data is JSON looks like this uh, what uh, open liberty can do for me I can go here and say, okay, give me please the open API. And I have the swagger uh, information with the schema, which was automatically derived from, uh, from, the, uh, from the object. And at the same time, uh, I get the same information, of course, from Payara. But uh, what Op Open Liberty does, it has a, a small uh, extension, which is proprietary, but really nice. So um, it has integrated Swagger UI. So I can go here and say, I would like to have here my, um, my um, information back and say, try it out, execute. And I get the error here because it doesn't understand this, uh, this uh, media type. So how to fix the media type? So we, this is uh, optional right now, but we can see whatever had happens. We are produ producing producers and uh, media type JSON. So now we tell the server, whatever's requested, just produce the JSON for everything and consumes the same. So, and uh, what happens behind the scenes all the time, as you can see, or not, not yet, the uh, behind the scenes, the uh, what deploys the application and it takes a few seconds. So this is what happens behind the scenes. I can f fully focus on code and uh, it is deployed behind the scenes. So now uh, switch back to the to here. So if I reload it, get, try it out, uh, you see application JSON, so it looks better. And now we get the proper response. So this was the fix. So by the way, Open Liberty, it behaves correctly and Payara is a little bit more convenient or lenient. So this is the, this is the difference. And um, of course, uh, now we can go here and say 9080. And this should be X resources X. And we have also the response from Open Liberty. So uh, cool. And uh, now let's talk about uh, cloud native configuration because we already have here. So instead of message, we can do color here and say default value silver. And here change to color and this should be this color this color save it so now what should happen it will look up in all the config sources for a property named color and if there's nothing there it will return silver and all the resources means it will go to um, environment uh, to a, a system environment first if there is nothing there will go to system properties then and then uh, uh, search for other config sources and uh, sorry system properties and then to the um, properties and then and then uh, look for custom config sources so okay so we have that so what we see, see silver here which can be overridden by where is it by changing here from message to color and now go to green so this is green and try that is green so this was like the cloud native configuration and now let's see whether we have any questions so are there any questions no questions here and no questions here what is perfect so now what I would like to do is uh, now focus on focus on uh, this we can sw switch that focus on um, a little bit metrics. So 
we have here x returned but more interesting is let's say we would like to create a new egg and uh, for that i would like to say here create and uh, let's go with string color and post so and um, for that we need an egg factory and the egg factory will cre will create egg string uh, color and uh, for instance could for instance check whether the col color is uh, is appropriate or not and reject uh, reject the uh, invalid colors let's say so and uh, let's say an inappropriate color is black so let's say if and i could use bin validation uh, of course here but um, let's keep it simple we don't need bin validation for now i would like to explain you another uh, approach uh, for micro profile so uh, if black um, com equals need not compare equals ignore case color then i would say return nothing should happen otherwise i would like to create an egg so um and um how to create a, ha a, a hack i wanted to say a hack an egg is the following so i will create the eggs boundary and uh, go to control and have an egg let's say egg store so we have the egg store and the egg store is an application scoped and it can store an egg and private uh, I would like to have a list of eggs eggs in it post construct this x uh, equals new array list so we have that and store egg it will just store the egg in the list So now, what we could hear is, we could actually say, um, we could have an egg number, and this would be a gauge, and this is a, a metric, and this gauge, the unit, is count, and it would return the egg's size. So what happens now, this returns the uh, total un amount of eggs here. And uh, what happens with that, you will see in a second. So on, uh, in parallel, what I would like to do is I will come back to Act Factory and say the Act Factory would like to have injected uh, Act Store. Store. And if this passes, Store, Store Act, New Act, and Color, and let's say it's boiled. So and uh, this should work hopefully so our egg resource uh, create we need here our egg factory egg factory factory which creates eggs and inject and here we have this factory create egg with the color so this should so this looks good it only have to work so let's see whether we will be able to make it work so first what i would like to do is i would like to go again here with curl and say we had localhost 8080 now payara again x resources and x so this works now 
what I would like to do is to say I would like to have a post request with content type uh, text plane. So this is not JSON. We could use JSON, but we don't have to. Text plane and the data is and the data is black. So nothing happened. No news are good news. Let's see. I would expect 204, which I also got. So now what what, what happened now? And uh, we can take a look here and go again to localhost 8080 matrix slash application matrix application and we see nothing uh, why not because uh, the black is an invalid color color red egg should be fine and the red flag as you can see there is uh, we have in the store one egg created so um, again red and let's say blue everything is valid except my code so do it again and we have two eggs which are valid so now two eggs which are valid this is business metric which is available as in prometheus format and what is also available in uh, plain json so i can say uh, content uh, accept sorry accept application slash json and uh, i have the matrix as json okay so let's see whether there are any questions i suggest i suppose no no questions so far so uh then proceed with the code now we have create egg and uh what i would actually really like to know is how many eggs were rejected so i would like to introduce a business metric so, and um and uh, how to do how to how to do this? So what I could do very easily, I could inject the uh, metric registry, metric registry registry, and the registry type is application. And what this means is that the uh, that this is a business metric, and here I could add registry counter, and the counter with name, let's call it uh, reject uh, rejected colors inc. So this is a business metric which will count all uh, eggs with rejected colors. It could be, for instance, in a payment system, uh, fraud count or something like this. So we have that. So now let's see whether it is actually usable. So I will try to find something with the black. So we have it. So black. Now go back here. 8080 metrics. And we see rejected colors too, and uh, and white. So we have one with rejected colors and one with uh, count one, which was created. But um, I could go even further with a small trick. I could say I would like to count which colors were actually attempted to create. So what I could do. I can say rejected colors and then add the color. So we get dynamic metric. And uh, let's try this. And what we get is we try with white and we can try with black. And again with black. And we will see that black was created twice. And uh, actually, black is the only color we currently we currently reject. But uh, yeah, it could be a. Um, what I use uh, this technique is, for instance, to count HTTP status responses to microservices communicating one with each other. So okay, we have that. And uh, now let's assume 
so we still have a little bit of time so what I will do is the following I would like to show you um, here XTOR so the XTOR could be rather unstable let's let's say unstable the store egg will communicate with another system and then another this, this other system is not always available so uh, to simulate that uh, what I uh, would like to do is let's say uh, I will forget that or just throw new store is full so and if I attempt that of course what happens uh, not black rather than red I get illegal state exception store is full which is 500 so uh, this is not really nice so what I could do of course I can here create my own exception so let's try that and say uh, store is full exception and this exception could inherit of course from illegal state exception but what I would like to do is to inherit from web application exception which can be application exception and the application exception will throw uh, for instance uh, or throw will cause rollback or commit and this application rollback true means if this happens please roll back the entire transaction we don't have databases here so we don't need transactions for now but it's very useful in a real world projects where you have to use uh, transactions so and uh, what I like to have constructor with a simple message and this message uh, I will do the following I will call the super which is fine response uh, status 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 type status type is um, actually 400 this is bad request 400 uh, header reason message message and then build so this what I would like to do is to create uh, to map this exception automatically to status 400 or whatever you like with some embedded reason so uh, let's do this uh, instead of doing that I would like to to, to throw my or my own exception story is full exception and uh, what will happen is I get bad request 400 reason store is full so uh, with embedded header so there is no exceptions mappers no try and catch by the way uh, I'm just uh, curious so uh, we already deployed 22 times to two simultaneous servers running on my machine and our war is around 7k and we got a nice message that uh, the build times were max three seconds min two uh, two or four seconds and this is total time so and whatever we did was successful which is of course great this is a true should it be at uh, for <laughs> if we're building easter eggs right so we have that so now uh, so story is full exception so now what I would like to do is to say okay but it could be empty so retry three times so I would like to do retry and max retry is three this default but I would like explicitly set that and then just retrying so and uh, now it should deploy again exactly and let's try this again and where is the payara this is this is our payara as you can see what happens now it uh, retries three times and then we get the exception so the exception uh, that the method is retried three times so I will just do it again now um,
and um, and uh, we see the exception uh, the the method repeats three times and then we got the error. Okay. So where is my curl? Curl. Um, exactly. So uh, do it the last time, and uh, you see that it retries. This is the invocation three times. Now, what I could also do, I could say fine. Then retry three times, and then invoke a fall invoke a fallback, fallback, and the fallback. And I think. So what's wrong with that? Fallback method is. Uh, um, how how we can do it? Burn, <laughs> burn the egg. <laughs> okay, so now we have a method, and this is the method it has to have the same signature, and it's we'll say burning the egg dot egg. So should work, and we only need a little bit of to string. Okay. Now try it again. We have now the red and the payara. As you can see, it retried three times, and then we have burning the egg, which is red and boiled true. So um, this is a part of fault tolerance, tolerance, microprofile fault tolerance. So what we already have here, we have this, these two annotations come from microprofile fault tolerance, and um, the res this this part comes from config, microprofile configuration, and uh, JaxOS comes from microprofile or Java E8, regardless what you would like to see. This is a JaxOS feature, but the cool th thing is, all the application servers right now are supporting both. They are supporting MicroProfile and Java 8, so you don't actually have to care where the API is coming from. The most important thing is they are already included on the application server, so your war is very thin. Very thin means 7K in our, our case. Deployment is fast, and uh, you don't have any external dependencies which is, by the way, really good for scanning. So uh, because of Java 8, the thin wars are uh, are empty. There are no external dependencies except your code. So something like security scan usually will pass through because there are no potentially malicious dependencies you have to ship with your application. Okay, cool. So we have it. The uh, the uh, XTOR, of course, fallback retry, what you also get for free is uh, circuit breaker. Circuit breaker, or you can get, for instance, circuit breaker or um, uh, bulkheads. And the bulkhead packer, uh, <laughs> bulkhead packer, bulkhead pattern says, uh, for instance, could uh, invoke the methods with two threads only. Or uh, if there are more concurrency than two, it uh, it will uh, invoke the uh, the fallback method. What's also available is the method with the name timeout, which would lead to timeout. So um, okay, this was the fault tolerance, microprofile fault tolerance. Okay, we um, we achieved a lot with that. Um, let's take a look on uh, on testing. This is uh, one of the uh, questions, you know, how I test my applications, and what I would like to do is to create a x xst, and this should be in workspaces. Should be in workspaces. It's a wrong folder. Airhex, and. Where was it? Where are we? It should be here in the workspaces, air hacks workspace, workspaces, air hacks workspace. So it should be here. 
and XST, perfect. So I would like to create that. And uh, this is the project, but I would like to go with Java 1.8. It's good enough. And then Jax RS step. This is my those are my testing dependencies, dependencies. And this is um, quite important in microservices that you are testing your service from outside. Unit tests and integration tests are fine, but the ultimate test is you know to access your API from outside. And uh, I would like to create uh, or add the, a JUnit test, and the JUnit test is going to be we had I think X resource IT, so resource IT. We just call AIX X resource IT. Go for it. So we have that. And it created the okay. I would like to use the plain old J unit. So I don't have to configure any additional plugins in Maven. So this is good enough. So this is deleted. And this is deleted. Now Let's do something. So what I would like to do is to automate the test and say init before and uh, client builder new client return the client this client and say this client target and the target was I actually forgot again and uh, this resources and X. And what we get back is a target on the test. And then I would like to have a method um, fetch X test. This target on the test request and it will request a media type uh, application JSON. And then I would like to get a response. And now it depends what I would like to see. Let's say uh, if this was a proper test, I would fetch response first and then check the uh, status code. But what I can also do, create a shortcut and say, okay, this is just a smoke test. I would like to see what's inside and say, okay, just return the JSON object. This is the egg and write it. So, and test the file. So uh, the error we got is because I launched mistakenly uh, NetBeans on Java 11 and in Java 11, something like Java X activation data source is not uh, there. But this uh, test still passes, so I could actually eliminate the error by using Java 8 here somewhere. Uh, run or compile, I could use Java 8, and then the ugly error should be gone. Test. So now it looks nicer. So uh, what I uh, usually do is uh, I always uh, have uh, a pair of project. This is the microservice project and a corresp corresponding uh, egg projects, which uh, <laughs> egg projects system test project, which uh, which uh, accesses the uh, public API with fully automated tests, and the tests are running locally on my machine. How? Fairly easy. So I can just switch to ST and say maven compile fail save fail save integration test and uh, as you can see it runs from command line so usually i do this without the ide and i see an immediate feedback what's what's going on so um we have five minutes to go, so let's see whether there are any questions. I guess no questions so far. Everything crystal clear. Perfect. So what we can do in five minutes? Um, we could actually make the X reactive. <laughs> Why not? Reactive X. So um, 
let's assume this comes from the backend, which actually could. So the egg factory could actually return the eggs. Um, just do this list of egg. And this is X. Return this store X or all X. Actually, we don't need it here. We can use this directly. So we have all here. So and this will return all the X. Return this X. All of them. And what I would like to do is to remove that and reintroduce my X storing logic. And um, so I could use the factory. And what I could also use is my X store. X store. Store. And here would return a list of X. And this is this store all. So looks good. Now let's try it. So first we can add a red egg looks good then let's say a blue a blue egg looks even better and then i would like just to fetch all the eggs and see whether it works and it works so now what i wanted to show you is reactive eggs right so what you can do with a little bit of uh Refactoring, I would like to have a completion stage. And by the way, I, uh, I usually my code was a little bit more complicated, and I showed this in a Java user group in Prague. And Ondro from uh, from Payara said um, you can actually return completion stage directly, and I completely overlooked a small piece in the spec, Jax or spec. So what you what you usually would do, you would uh, have a void method with async response and a suspended async response, and this is just a shortcut. But um, what happens there, I can actually say completions, uh, completable future, so I can use completable future, so I uh, supply async, and this store all, so this is what is supplied, then, then uh, accept, I will have to use the old fashion in this particular case. Uh, void suspended. My <laughs> backend is not asynchronous yet, so I will have to in introduce the asynchronity, asynchronity here. Asynchronous uh, async response, response, and this is going to be response resume, like this. So what happens now, I fetch the store, which is a synchronous call. It doesn't re return the completion stage yet. So this was the problem. And then accepts resume. So, and I would like to do this in this particular case. The only problem is, of course, that this will run in a fork join pool. So I would like to reintroduce the bulkheads here. Resource managed executor service, MES, and the service I will add here. So, and now we have a fully reactive egg production, or no production, egg fetching uh, logic. I would like to save that. And uh, what means reactive? It means the uh, thread from application server does not block um, if the uh, factory or the store is stuck and takes longer to fetching, uh, to fetching the eggs. So let's see whether it actually works. So I would like to add the blue egg and a gray egg, the best, and 
it works in fully asynchronous way. So um, we are done. We are a little bit over time. So uh, thank you for watching and see you at workshops in Munich Airport. Or if you have still questioned what I did right now, the first Monday of the month, or if it's not the first, it's the second, depends. Sometimes I'm in projects. I cannot just uh, launch the show. So see you at airhex.tv, which is um, uh, the first Monday of the month, 6 p.m. CET. So thank you for watching and bye.